Bonjour Europe and welcome to a new episode of Christa's Road to Eurovision. Today I'm enjoying Paris and I am here to meet Jon Steers that represented Switzerland last year in Eurovision Song Contest. And apparently he lives in Paris these days so that's very nice for me. Ah, en santé! My name is Christa. For many years I have been trying to find the answer to the question. What makes the Eurovision Song Contest such a special phenomenon? I thought I would crack the code when I participated myself in 2013, but I still want to know all about its magic. So this year my road to Eurovision continues. On the road to Turin I want to discover the fascinating stories behind the Eurovision Song Contest. Welcome to Christa's Road to Eurovision! How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm fine, but I'm freezing! Yeah. What is this snowing in Paris in April? Actually, I brought the Swiss weather here. You brought it here, <laughs> oh my god. Hey, let's go sit here under yeah, the tree, maybe it's better here. Yeah. Wow, I was really surprised by the snow. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised to meet you in Paris. I thought that you were living in Switzerland. What happened? <laughs> Actually, for the work, I needed to come here for uh, like to, to be closer to my label. Okay. because I signed in Paris. Oh. So uh, that's why I'm living in Paris now since two months. Oh, so that's... you're really new to the city. But yeah. you know, I don't mind coming to Paris. I think <laughs> it's super nice. So, okay, uh, but then I understand. But tell me, how has life after Eurovision been? That's quite crazy. I mean, there are so many things that happened since Eurovision. And uh, like, as I said, I signed in a label. I'm preparing my album. I had to work with several producers to find the right one. And uh, now I'm going to travel also for like to make my album and uh, I'm traveling for concerts uh, and yeah and that's really cool because I really wanted a connection this year with Eurovision and actually I'm going to comment Eurovision for the Swiss TV. Oh you're going to do that? Yes, that so I'm so, so happy. Funny. <laughs> I have also done that but in Finland for the Finnish broadcast. So cool. Yeah, it, it, it was actually really funny. But oh, that's great to hear. But what did you get out from Eurovision Song Contest? Eurovision gave me so many things that I cannot describe them, yeah. uh, but I would say like uh, I was in a period of time that I needed to feel legitimate as, a, as an artist yeah. as an artist and as a musician. Yeah. And uh, actually I'm so happy that uh, like all this experience happened to me and, uh, and yeah, like it gave me more self-confidence also on stage. Uh, I learned to dare more on stage, to try new things, to move to yeah. feel more confident with my body and like those kind of things. So yeah. I'm really happy uh, that I did Eurovision. And uh, yeah, and actually a lot of artists ask me like, do you think I should do it? Do you think I should try? I'm like, go, because it's not an experience you can compare with another TV show or another thing, because it's really unique. It is, it really is. It's, and it, it's so happy to hear that you got so much good things out of it, as you say, that's amazing. Yeah, and you did like your song and your number, it was really <laughs> great. What about, did you make any friends? Do you have contact with any of other Eurovision artists? Of course, yeah. so uh, I had the chance to have a lot of friends there. So Blas Canto from Spain, yeah. uh, for example, Yandrik, we, sp yeah. we sp quite speak a lot uh, through Instagram. And like, uh, yeah, lots of artists from Eurovision. But then of course, um, we have less occasions to see each other because we are far from each other. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, you know, like from like everyone in his country. So yeah. uh, we try to see each other when we have the possibility to. But uh, of course, uh, now because we are more uh, in an open situation, uh, um, health 
Yeah, like, due to cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, now it's really easier to, to fly it and to, to see them and to go. Yeah. And Possible to meet again. Exactly. Yeah. And you also just released a new song called Silhouette. Tell me about it. So actually, uh, we wrote this song in a camp, uh, in a songwriting camp with uh, Duncan Lawrence. Oh, nice. Yeah, with uh, Jordan oh, Garfield. The big Eurovision family. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, and uh, like we were such a huge team and uh, we tried lots of things and actually Silhouette was also competing for representing Switzerland I mean my oh, year okay. when I tried uh, like to yeah. propose new songs and Tulini Ver won but Silhouette was at the second place oh. and I really believed uh, in that song and I loved the the energy and the lyric of that song so, so for me it was in, like really important to have it yeah. uh, in my project pro in my project yeah Oh, that's really nice. I did not know that the Silhouette was also there competing in. So actually, it could also have been a Eurovision song. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Fun fact. Yeah, fun <laughs> fact. Really fun fact for our Eurovision lovers out there. Thank you so much, Jan. It was really nice to meet you. And I wish you all the best for the future. Good luck with your music. And I hope to see you in Turin. Me too. <laughs> oh, the weather outside is frightful. But fire is so delightful. It's time to drive from a snowy Paris to a snowy Zurich. But in the meantime, you get to see when Jens interviewed fans about this year's entries. Au revoir! <laughs> My favorite perfume, Chanel number no. five. But when it comes to Eurovision divas, Chanel's number one. Still, what do Eurovision fans think of the Spanish entry this year? Will they make a video? Watch it more, 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 more. Will they go crazy making promo, more, 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 more? Will they fast forward saying hell no, 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 no? Let's find out. So, baby, let's go. Let's go. Well, uh, Spain, I really like the song. Um, uh, it was originally written for Jennifer Lopez, the queen, I mean, one and only. Forget about Queen B, because Eurovision has now its own Queen C. It's Chanel from Spain. If she walks by, everyone should just bow down, um, because she's serving too much, and Spain should really win. Spain has that summer catchy yeah. vibe. Yeah. Spain is sex. Yeah. If Elaine Ferreira and Camila Cabello had a child, it would definitely be Chanel. And can we talk about like, the body and the song? It's such a bop. I can't wait until they blast this one through the speakers in the club and I can be like, watch slow-mo. Like, you mean, it's such a vibe, it's such a bop. This one is top 10 material for sure. Slow-mo, mo, 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 booty, yeah, go girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> for me, she has the full package. She looks great, she sounds great, she dances great. The, the show was great. It's interesting to see how they can uh, translate that in, in perhaps in the smaller arena. Spain, I didn't like it in the fr at first, but it grew on me. I went to Eurovision in concert in Amsterdam and she really won me over with her enthusiasm. I love Spain and I can't stop thinking, imagine if this song had competed in 2005, they would have definitely won. And I still think they're going to do well this year. Um, don't think they'll win, but I'm definitely rooting for them. It's needed this year because there are a lot of ballads and this is a breath of fresh air, I think. And some people complain about the voice, but I disagree because her voice is good. I've seen her in a talk show in the Netherlands where she uh, did an acoustic version of the song with a guitar playing player and she was very good. She sings and dances together, that's really hard to do. I think and I hope that Spain will end in the top 10 because it's one of my favorites. Maybe win so we can go to Spain next year. I think uh, it's, it's a summer hit. It's a summer hit. I see it in, in the Jumbo in, in Gran Canaria. Um, with some sangria. Um, it also reminds me of Hadis a lot, the, the same vibe and, and the outfit. Uh, no comments about the outfit. It is a um, really pop dance uh, song with a little bit of Latin flair. And um, this year is amazing, but um, 
I think it is really repetitive and overly done at the Eurovision Song Contest. And it's not a complicated or difficult song, but this is not what this song needs. It's just, it's just okay. What she's doing, she's doing well. So, and does she win? No, I don't think so. The lyrics aren't that deep. It's about uh, self-love. It's not self necessary. Love. No, no, it's only about, yeah, take a video, my hypnotic booty, and uh, watch it slow-mo. <laughs> This year we have not really bad songs, but we have a lot of boring songs. Then comes Spain, she will sing, she will perform, people will wake up and they will start to vote. And I, I can promise you Spain will do very well this year. Oh, The German rapper-singer pianist Malik Harry sings We used to be the rock stars But Germany, were you? Really? Germany has received from the public Zero points I'm sorry You are a star in sending songs that rock us to sleep though But let's see how much the German entry rocks this year, according to the Eurovision fans. Uh, it's a more emotional and quieter song, so I think he's gonna stand out with that. Also with his acts, he stands alone on the stage and he, uh, he plays the instruments by himself. I think it's a bit dull and boring. <laughs> it, I, I, for me, Eurovision is sex and, and spring, summer, and I miss that in the song. Well, uh, he's, he's a bit too young to say he used to be a rock star. Uh, maybe in 40 years he can say he used to be a rock star or a pop star. Honestly, I do think that if this one wasn't one of the big five, that it wouldn't qualify for the finals. Um, yeah, it just won't work for Eurovision. It feels kind of flat, honestly. And I do think that they try to put some kind of flavor into the song with this rap. But I don't think this one will end up very high. Feeling like German TV is not taking Eurovision so seriously. So I think around New Year, December, they wake up and they say, Oh my God, shit, it's your vision. We need, uh, we need a song, we need a performer. With Germany, it's always kind of a hit or miss. And in this case, I thought, well, it was a miss. It's not memorable. It's not a song that sticks. And I'm afraid they're not going to end up very high this year. I'm sorry. Sorry, Germany. Zero points. So fast, wish there was a way to know that we're in the good old days before we all just leave them. I don't feel hate, I just feel sorry So you can make up the made thing that it'll never make it back to you Cause I don't feel All right, Jendrik, I was surprised to meet you here in Switzerland. You know, this is so funny because, let me tell you one thing, I met Jon and he represented Switzerland last year. Yes. And now I met him in Paris, because apparently he lives there these days. And then I thought oh. I was going to go to Germany and meet you there. And you're like, no, I'm in Zurich. So now we are here. Yeah, What is happening? We switched it up. We were like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you go to France, I go to Switzerland, yeah. and somebody goes to Sweden. Yeah. We, we are everywhere. Yeah, but I, it was actually really funny. But what is the reason that you are now in Zurich? Well, I'm actually rehearsing for a play that I'm going to play here in Zurich. Oh. So I was supposed to do a play way before Eurovision Song Contest, like in 2020, uh, here in Zurich. Yeah. But it got postponed because of Corona. Yeah, and of now course. I'm finally able to do it. So I will be playing a comedy about a bank robbery. Okay. Which is actually a British play, but yeah. we're doing it in German here in Zurich and in, at, at the Hechtplatz Theater. Okay. So if you want to come, come. <laughs> we're starting in May. And then we're doing that for two months and then we have a break and then we do it in Hamburg. Oh, so fun. I did not know that you're also an actor. Oh, yes, I'm oh, yeah. quite talented in <laughs> all editing. different ways. Actor, singer, <laughs> superstar. Oh, my God, okay. Like that's, you. Yeah, but that's so nice to hear. 
But tell me, because I'm really curious, of course, like how was the Eurovision experience for you? It's It was overwhelming. I think that's the best word yeah. to describe it in both ways, positive and negative. The the people you meet, everything was like mostly positive. Everything's mostly positive, um, like meeting the people, finding people that like the music you do and the, the, the kind words online and everything. And uh, right after, there was like a little negative side, you know, like this kind of hole because in mm. Germany if you get second to last or if you get very close very low mm. they kind of hate you Aww. and but it wasn't really the hate that got to me it was more like that I felt I disappointed people that I, I felt guilty that I was bad and Aww. that was a hole that I had to get through yeah but I got through I'm quite happy and now I'm <laughs> ready for new projects and now, new stuff. Yeah, now you are sitting here being as, yes. as positive as ever. This is like, this is really how I and all the Eurovision fans remember you. And now when you have this amazing fan base, what are you going to do next? Well, I'm planning new stuff. Right now I'm rehearsing this theatre play, but yeah. I'm also like um, producing new music. Okay. Not sure how to get it out there yet, but uh, I'm actually... All, I already like shoot it, shoot, shoot, shot, shot, yeah. that's the shot two music videos Ooh, okay. by myself again. Okay, but nice. But not sure how to like it's release it. Yeah. You don't know how to release how to re it. It's all there. Yeah. It's all ready. It's close to being ready, and I just find just have to find the right moment because right after the Eurovision Song Contest, I felt like I had to do it out of pressure, and that's yeah. why I didn't do it because I yeah. want to do it when I feel happy about it. Yeah, and so, I can really understand yeah, that. Yeah, and it's all ready. The music is recorded and there's also like new stuff coming. Ooh! Yes. So what kind of style is it going to be? Are you going to follow up with this thing you did in Eurovision? Is it something else? What is happening? The main thing that I want to do with music is um, like making making them feel hopeless or making positive like having positive thoughts yeah and i think like not not in a way of i don't feel hate because yeah. that was like positive 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 yeah i don't feel hate that's the whole point of the song that's the song i guess you need pitilization there's some kind of validation you cope with the frustration that you're enemy fixation it's another affirmation that you're just a hateful person who's not really better than me <laughs> Maybe too positive. Yeah, but positive. that was also a fun show number, and you did a little yeah. extra for so, your. But I think it's more about the mess. Like it's more about that the song is supposed to make you feel hopeful yeah. or positive. So even if it's about a sad topic, yeah, there's there is always a positive side or like a glimpse of hope in it. Yeah, and to try find finding that in the music. That's what I'm trying to do. Just to stay on that track of yeah. It sounds great. That Finding sounds the that's sunny side of life. Yeah, and that really sounds like Jenrik. Thank you for inviting me. And now we have this hot chocolate that is typical here in Zurich, Swiss, right? Swiss hot chocolate. Yeah, Swiss hot chocolate. So now we're going to enjoy this. Prost. Prost. Or whatever you say here. It's right. difference a day make. I mean yesterday we were in Zurich and the weather was crazy bad and today I'm waking up in beautiful sunny Lugano. As the official travel partner of the Eurovision Song Contest 2022 and their Travel Proud certified hotels, Booking is an inclusive experience provider. And every week we look into experiences from some fans or fellow travelers in Let's Get Booking! Hi guys, we are Amira and Ilonka and, and we, we love, love the Eurovision Song Contest! 
uh, it was our our first uh, first time first for the time. Eurovision Song Contest. And then we saw Maneskin just before the show. I say, Amira, Amira, there's Maneskin, the Italian boys. Yes, and uh, we went to them and we asked a picture, uh, but they had to go because the show was soon starting beginning. very, very soon. So we made a picture. Um, it wasn't that well, the picture. <laughs> But we had the picture. But we had a picture with and Maneskin. After the show, they won. Yeah. So the picture was was it's very, very special, special for us. Yes. We like the food, of course. Pizza and pasta. And the Italian guys. Oh, we really uh, often listen to the Eurovision music. For example, when we are driving. Uh, to somewhere, yeah. yes, we always listen to it, and then we have uh, we have, have a fun. party, we, we have, have fun. party, we have fun, just singing. In the car. <laughs> yes. Oh, Ooh. big party yes, in Italy! Yes, it will be a big party. Contest. We are so exciting to go to Italy. Yes. Yes. I cannot wait. Yes, for, for me the same. Yeah. I can also <laughs> not wait. J'aime, j'aime la vie. J'aime, j'aime la vie. Ukraine. Yes. Yes, Ukraine. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yes, they are the best. The song yeah. is the best, and because of yes, the time right now. The time now. With Ukraine. Yes. Yeah. Did you know that the first Eurovision Song Contest ever took place in this beautiful city back in 1956? Now I'm going to see if I can find the concert hall where the show was broadcasted. I found the place where Eurovision Magic started back in 1956. I'm here and it used to be a super beautiful building, but nowadays not so much. I can almost feel the old Eurovision glamour when I walk around here in Lugano. And the funny thing is that the first winner actually came from Switzerland. Her name was Luz Asia. Refrain, couleur du ciel, parfum de mes vingt ans. Asia was actually a bigger Eurovision fan than me because she participated in the Eurovision selection five times. But enough about Switzerland and Lugano. Now we're moving on to the next Eurovision city. Nous avons grandi, l'amour. 